Okay, he's 13, and he is a pitcher. He's got lateral pain. He's got pain on the lateral part of his elbow, and he has an effusion and a painful click with passive elbow motion, so the click means it's mechanical. What's his diagnosis? Here we go, osteochondritis desiccant. This is a lateral part of the elbow. Remember we said throwing, compression on the lateral side, so you're going to get breakdown of the bone and the cartilage. So this kid's got osteochondritis desiccans, 13-year-old lateral elbow pain, most likely osteochondritis desiccans of the capitellum. It happens in gymnasts and it happens in throwers. Those are the two people who load the lateral part of their elbow. The younger they are, the better. And so the smaller it is, the better, the smaller the lesion as well. So the treatment is going to be based on where they are in life, especially if they're young. And if it's Panner's disease, you treat it because it's benign. Panner's disease is a benign thing. It's going to go away on its own. So you treat it. It's good to know that. They're younger than 10. Whatever it looks like, you're going to let them be treated without surgery. Most heal over a period of uh, many months, and so it's very frustrating to these athletes because it takes a long time to heal. Why does it happen? OCD happens because blood supply to the area is not strong and the setting of repetitive force, and so the bone gets weak. It cannot undergo any repair process. It gets weak enough where it fractures, and then you get a injury where the bone is injured, and in the beginning, the cartilage is intact, in the early phase, so that would be type 1. Then you get a cartilage fracture, which you see right in this arthroscopic probe uh, lifting up the cartilage. And then in the final stage, you get loose bodies, the thing's broken off, it's floating around the elbow. Which of the following statements best describes the typical early presentation of OCD of the elbow? You know what it's going to be. It's going to be stiffness. Patients will get stiffness as the uh, one of the earliest presentations. I can see locking, catching, mechanical. That is definitely possible. So, but in general, loss of motion. So a young thrower comes in, loss of motion, lateral lobo pain. We're thinking OCD. Okay, so insidious, lateral lobo pain, possible effusion. They lose motion and they're tender right over that capitellar area and they have that loss of extension. And you can get crepitus. You uh, pronate supinase flex and extend, you can hear that crepitus right in that area. X-rays can help, especially in more advanced stages. You see lucency. Here you see even greater lucency in the area. That is the capitellum. And then on MRI sand, you see the size of it. Here's a sagittal view. And then in this case, it's a stage three because the capitellum is uh, cartilage is already displaced and it's behind the elbow. This patient typically can't extend their elbow because this is a mechanical block to it. Here's a coronal. You can see there's signal all around the capitellum, and so this cartilage is unstable, likely causing mechanical symptoms. So stage one, cartilage is intact. Activity modification, avoidance of throwing, get them strong, let it heal, non-operative treatment. If they have failure of non-operative treatment, stage one, you can drill it, or those that have mechanical symptoms especially if they fail non-operative treatment, they undergo surgery. A lot of variations in the uh, surgical technique. They can be fixed if it's a healthy lesion. It can be fixed with a reduction in fixation, trying to compress it, like other areas of OCD. You need a very young patient for this because the healing potential sometimes is very poor. Or you can debride it, you can remove it, and you can either do marrow stimulation to get a fibrous tissue response in the defect, or you can um, do a uh, allograft procedure, in fact, or an autograft osteochondral uh, uh, grafting procedure. Complications are stiffness, pain, inability to return to sports, and arthritis, particularly in the radiocapitellar joint. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.